Okay, today's video is on the triphasic triple stack. And when I say that, um, this is how I position my athletes to do the most sport specific hip extension uh, squatting type of exercises. And this could be in the step up, in the pit shark, or in the variations, and I'll go over a few of those. Um, but you'll get the point at the end of this video. And I found this to have more transfer into sports versus, let's say, a vertical uh, shin uh, squat. And I'll give you a couple examples of that as we go in here. And and look, this is uh, I started doing this with a uh, majority of my jumps in 2005. Sometimes people looked at me crazy. Track coaches didn't because they've been jumping the correct way for years. Even high school track coaches uh, would understand this. Um, but so uh, and then I kind of had done the safety bar split squat and floating heel stuff for maybe eight, nine years now at this point. Um, not been that long ago and and the reason i do the floating heel is uh, I'll, I'll actually get to that in a little bit in some of the father falling slides but the starting position for a majority of these things whether it's a safety bar split squat whether it's a step up is basically here if it's a step up your other leg straight down this foot would be on a bench but in this one for example what we're doing is um and i put knees over the toes here but that's not the case for every lift if you were holding dumbbells it would be a little different you'd be a little farther back um, I'm incorporating a lot of this stuff um, with a, uh, a concept into my system. It's called the NXCIT, Neurological Cross-Crawl Integration Concept, how we position the entire body to make sure that we are uh, uh, matching the gait cycle with uh, a lot of these things. So, um, the, and you look at my programs um, that I've released recently, it, have, it has athletes doing the uh, NXCIT, which... Uh, I'll release all those concepts here in in the next six months. Um, again, like as I said, we'll have a floating heel. I just put this athlete on a plate. It can be on the ground. doesn't have to be on the plate. We do this lift with uh, six to 800 pounds sometimes, folks, at super maximal loading. I'll share some videos and other slides in here where you can just click on it and see about my super maximal loading. Now, on the way down, we lift up the big toe. So the big toe would be pointing up. This is the, the goal, and the reason is it's, it's training the ankle rocker concepts. Why the knee comes forward, you're training the ankle rocker concept. And I'm going to do a tibialis video here shortly. Um, a lot of people have missed a lot of things on the tibialis, not, not that they're not aware of it. Mm, they just haven't connected some dots, and I'm, I'm going to connect those. Um, so then once you come down, the big toe grips on the way up. All this causes a pre-stretch in the Achilles, stabilizes a lot of things. Um, but the point is, is toe up on the way down. Squeeze the big toe when you come back up. Pull yourself into the ground too, because a lot of sports positions, you have to pull yourself into the ground or into the position. So that's a big factor. So when you pull yourself down, okay, with your toe up and then they have squeezed their toe violently into the ground. You can watch this video. Um, the slide will be hooked below. It's obviously the Babinski reflex. Okay. And what that does is keeps the glute firing in the right sequence. So I'll, I think the next slide talks about that, and I'll go over it. But look, this activates everything. Folks, the reason it's important that your foot's functioning in these lifts is because the foot's the only thing touching the ground when you run. And this is not running, but you need to train the foot to be strong. Okay? So, and there's a number of things that could happen here. If the arch is weak, this is why we do the spring ankle, this internal collapsing of the knee, valgus. A lot of people think it's a glute need. It's not. It's actually 90% of the time when I find this problem or weakness, it's actually the arch in the athletes. Okay? So, it's just for coaches to be aware. Um, I think the big thing is, um, let me go here to the, yeah, um, let's go back to the video. I want you to see this video. So notice I have an athlete here doing, let's just wait till he gets to the other leg. Okay. So it was loaded, double banded. This is one of my better uh, exercises in my power phases. You're actually... I know people ask, you're pulling down, causing a greater restretch, uh, stretch reflex. But you can see the stack here. Now, this person is 6'4", had a long thigh bone, but you can see the positions um, 
there and what's going on is this is everything's preloaded we're driving the big toe into the ground squeezing it hard shortening it and they're exploding up this is the stack whether this is it and i put this on an incline i can do it on a uh, a flat bench too you just heels a little more elevated but this is the type of athletic position you want your hip the focus here for your athletes is your hip is driving into your foot into the foot because that's what happens when your athlete moves and change directions um sorry i went backwards okay so here's an example of a pit shark um step up that i like to do so you can see folks um the position here on this triple stack stacked up tight knees in front of the toes heels angled driving forward this is one of the most and if you add weights on here uh, it can be one of the most powerful, uh, um, I would say, lifts of an athlete for acceleration that you can get. So you can see how he's driving to this foot, okay? Not pushing the butt back, okay? You are driving forward while the butt uh, is being pushed to the foot, okay? Your glute muscles are pushing down, and you get to extension here he's not actually, there he is, he got to full extension. Notice this athletic position right here. Bands are resisting here, explosively pulling down. And whatever phase you're in, you can add strength or not. Uh, weights or not at weights, it just depends. This might be a speed step up for us, which it looks like. Power, you'd add some weights or, or even greater bands. So, and the reason you have to squeeze the toe is because you create this pattern. You create this pattern. The, the glute fires first by squeezing the toe, the Babinski reflex, which then helps engage the hamstrings and then the contralateral QL for uh, balancing out the, the torque running through the hip and then engaging the opposite side upper body. And in RPR, we talk uh, pretty commonly about this. And when this is dysfunctional, when this glute pattern isn't correct, then you have a problem. RPR fixes this glute pattern, but by squeezing the big toe, you drive that glute pattern home on this triple stack. Now, uh, the reason I'm not a big uh, believer in, in for athletes in pushing weight on your heels when you do a squat, especially a vertical squat, is because you don't really engage the calf or the foot in uh, driving force into the ground. Okay. And that's what you do when you run folks. That's what all athletes do when they have to move. So the biggest thing years ago, I would get some results out of the, the gate with vertical jump on their, let's say I'm back squatting somebody with their weight on their heels. Well, eventually that tests, you can't get anything more out of them because there's a limit. Well, you're not involving, especially for years. Um, and I think people still do this is you know when they do plyometrics they teach people to land and come back on their heels and 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 there's limited dynamic correspondence with applying force in the ground with your hip knee calf and foot okay so the big thing is i want you to understand that years ago i realized that look if you're only doing a ver if if your main exercises are flat-footed vertical shin whether it be lunges squats whatever it may be you're going to be limited in your vertical jump results. When you start going floating heel, pushing up, doing your plyos that way, as you should be doing them anyway, you'll get better results. Now, this torso and glute activation, uh, obviously, I got that from Yuri Verchyansky. And what I'm saying here is, let's take a look, see if I can find it here. Okay. So what you want, folks, um, it's not, it doesn't work on this lift, actually, as well, because... Um, the belt's pulling him down, so his back's compensating up. But let's go to the previous lift. So here, what your your goal here is, is to, right before he activated, uh, I think, actually, I'm sorry, I said Yuri Verkashansky. It's Carmel Bosco. Look at the angle of this shin and the torso. By squeezing the big toe, having these two angles the same, the glute contracts maximally. Again, I think this was Carmelo Bosco's research, but he, they found that the angle of the, the torso in the shin 
And when you're driving down, glute activates maximally. So the point is, is that this is the primary activation pattern for hip extension. Okay. So it's pretty simple. I showed you all these lifts on toes, front squatting, most squatting exercises, lunges, step ups. Um, if you look at some of my sports lunges on YouTube, you can find how to do a lunge that way. But folks, look, you can click on these. These are safety bar split squats. I got 40 minutes of, of educating people on this. Um, folks, this is a great powerlifting squat. Any type of squat. This is great. This is not, I've never seen an athlete in this position. I've seen athletes in this position. The heel was accentuated here for you, but this is a much better position notice the torso notice the shins foot's activated dynamic correspondence driving into the ground and then the body would propel forward if you were jumping or running folks elite sprinter knees in front of the toes super strong foot this is one of the greatest running backs ever barry sanders bar done knee in front of the toe folks if his foot wasn't strong enough he could never get in that position. His hips would be raised, his knee would come up higher, and he wouldn't be the running back that he was. He'd still be a good running back. He was uh, impressive. Just watch highlight films of this man cut. It's Barry Sanders, uh, Detroit Lions. In the video, there's all these concepts from the, the toe group reflex that I'm talking about, the anchor rockers that, that tie into this whole triple stack. Coaching points to change the directions. I've already had these on there, and then the spring ankle and performance. So look at those videos, take a look, and then the biggest thing, folks, is that come out of the hole hard. Okay, I have a integrated foot shift, which I'll hyperlink this video, and then pronate the toe into the big toe a little bit when you're doing lift, if you're stable enough and being safe. But this is a triphasic triple stack. It shows how you actually tie the all of my lifts in the complete concept and, and maybe five or six other concepts of why I do this. Um, finally releasing this after uh, eight to ten years of all these concepts coming in play, place with great results and please uh, email me with any questions.